when the spirit of condemnation attacks. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 KJV There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. According to the scriptures, everyone has sinned. We were born into this world of sin, and we are stained by the dirt of sin. If there is anyone out there claiming to be without sin or saying they have been living diligently that they have not made any mistake, they are lying. The Bible says if we claim to be without sin, we are liars and there is no truth in us. Saying you have not sinned before is a sin on its own because you are telling a lie. Through one man sin came into this world. God created everything to be good he created all the things that mankind needed to have a good life, but they spoiled it with sin. The devil deceived them and they lost everything. We all know the story of how we got here in the world today, how sin got full control of the world, that the world is now in sin. We also need to know the ways of God has been trying to get us out of the sin and into perfection. They started by using the blood of animals to wash away their sins. But sin is bigger and more powerful than the blood of animals. The blood of an ordinary man couldn't save man too, because you cannot use dirt to clean dirt and get a good result. We have been affected by sin. The innocent child born into this world will live in this sinful world and be affected by it too. Sin became the nature of mankind. Sin became what mankind cannot live without. The psalmist says in Psalm chapter 51, verse 5, KJV, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Sin is part of man. The blood of animals couldn't save man, and then what did God do again? We know God sent his son, Jesus, to die for our sins. There is one thing that sin brings, and that is condemnation. It doesn't matter how pure you have been, it doesn't matter the good you have been doing to people, sin will always condemn you. This always happens mostly when you are praying. Anytime you want to talk to God, sin will come out of nowhere and start to condemn you. That thing condemning you is not your conscience. It is not the Holy Spirit. It is a spirit from the devil. That spirit will make you feel like you have not been forgiven. That spirit is sent by the devil to reduce the joy of salvation you have by telling you that you have not been forgiven. If you have experienced it before, sometimes when you are praying, something tells you your prayers cannot be answered because God has not forgiven you or because you have sinned. This is something we can all relate to. This spirit doesn't care if you are in a church or if you are praying. It comes anytime. Anytime it comes, Anytime you are being condemned by the Spirit, don't think your faith is not strong. Don't ever think you are moving away from God. You are not. This Spirit wants you to feel like that, and that is why it will keep coming. Many of us, when this Spirit comes, it comes when we are praying or trying to spend time with God. It says, do you really think a holy God will answer the prayers of a sinner like you? Are you not the same person who told a lie yesterday? Are you not the same person who fornicated last week? Are you not the same person who stole last month? Are you not the same person who was masturbating last night? This spirit will say all this in an attempt to get you to give up praying and to give up trying to spend time with God. What God will want you to do is look at that spirit and say, for there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ. When that spirit comes to tell you that you will end up in hellfire, tell that spirit he is a liar. The Bible says there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Are you not in Christ? The only thing that should make you fear this spirit of condemnation is if you are not in Christ, but you are in Christ, and you cannot be condemned by anything or anyone. Sin caged mankind, and there was no way out for us. Mankind was destined to be condemned. We were destined to burn in hell, but Jesus came through with eternal life. If you know the magnitude of what Jesus has done for us, no spirit will condemn you and you will listen. If you know the price Christ had paid for you to come out of the cage that sin has kept you, if you knew 
the price Jesus paid to cancel every form of condemnation over your life. You will never listen to any spirit condemning you. Condemnation may not be from any spirit. Satan may use people to condemn you. Do you know what makes this worse? Is one of the places where a lot of condemnation happens is in the church. We need to stop doing this. We need not condemn people. We are Christians. The Bible did not say you should condemn another person. The Bible says we should correct in love. Paul explains something in Romans chapter 2, verse 1. You, therefore, have no excuse, you who pass judgment on someone else. For at whatever point you judge another, you are condemning yourself, because you who pass judgment do the same things. You are a human being. If you condemn someone because of their mistake, you have also sinned, which makes you be on the same level. We are all sinners. It is just the grace of God that helped us. We don't deserve it. You should never condemn anyone, because if you do that, you are condemning yourself too. The right thing to do is to condemn the act and correct the person with love. Why are we condemning people? It is not our job to do that. We are not God. He alone can judge. To everyone who has been condemned before and you have allowed those words of condemnation from the devil or from people to make you walk away from the faith, you are doing yourself no good. You are allowing them to push you away from God. You are in Christ. Always remember that if any spirit tries to condemn you, anytime you are praying and that spirit comes, Tell it that you are in Christ. It will continue to speak, but you must shut it. You have the power to shut that spirit. Have you forgotten that Jesus has given you all the authority? Tell that spirit yesterday has gone. Let it know that you are in Christ today and you are a new creature. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 KJV says, Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are becoming new. The life of sin you used to live is gone. You have left that life. That old self is dead and buried and you are a new being now. You have accepted Christ and you have been forgiven. If you are saying this, you have to say it with faith. Salvation will come if you have faith. Believe that you have been saved. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 KJV for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. It doesn't matter what you have done in the past. It doesn't matter the kind of sin you have committed. One of the reasons the sins of the past haunt people is because they tie themselves to the past. You are unable to leave the past. You are dwelling there. You claimed you have accepted Christ, and Christ is telling you old things have gone but you are still there. If you stay in the past, it will haunt you. You need to learn how to let go and focus on how to be better. Satan always loves to drag believers back to the ugly past so he can finish them there. This is the reason why you will see people calling themselves Christians, but they are not advancing. They are not moving forward. They are not making progress. Are you allowing the devil to tie you to the past? Are you being haunted by your ugly past? Almost everyone in Christ has an ugly past. You need to let go. You need to ask God to help you let go of the past so that you will progress. This is the time to do that. This is the time to move away from the past. The past will condemn you. I know it is hard to leave an ugly past, but I am not saying you should do this yourself. I am not saying you should be trying by yourself. You need a power that is stronger than your past. You need a power to break you free. There is no condemnation anymore. Stop allowing it in you. Stop allowing it to get the best of you. Tell Satan, not today, Satan. Tell him he is a liar and that he's always been a liar. Tell the devil you are forgiven and you cannot be condemned. Let him know you mean it. Let him know you know what you are saying. Another thing you need to know about this spirit is that it kills confidence. Every time you go to God in prayer, the spirit comes and condemns you. 
your confidence will go. If you know you have been forgiven, if you stand by the truth that your sins are forgiven, if you know there is no condemnation for you, you will have the confidence to go to God. I want to ask you, are you in Christ at all? Have you accepted Christ at all? If you have not, the truth is that the spirit of condemnation will get the best of you. Whenever you want to pray, it will come and destroy your confidence. If you are in Christ, that spirit has no say over your life. You need the confidence to go to God through Christ. You need Christ. Don't even let anyone deceive you that you can overcome the spirit of condemnation yourself. It will affect your self-esteem. You will not be able to do great things because that spirit will always tell you it doesn't count because you are a sinner. You need Christ to break free. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, KJV says, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him.